Now, if you are coming back to karting, you've made the right decision. It's so much fun, it's always been fun. Great question from Benji is, what sort of budget would you set out for a competitor for a racing season without breakages? Hey Des, it's my first race this weekend. Have you got any tips for me? Hey guys, welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video is Q&A. Thanks to everybody that's written in a question on Instagram, Facebook, obviously Patreon and our YouTube members. We really appreciate that little bit extra you guys give us every week. Helps keep us out here dominating the airwaves on YouTube. Quick shout out to ourselves. This week is Black Friday and we have a huge sale on our amazing website, powerpublic.com.au. So head on over and get yourself a rad deal on our Racing Rituals tutorial series. It's awesome, we go in depth on all sorts of things. Our new episode, Wet Practice is the Best Practice, is live and kicking. So get over there, get one or get them all. Now on to today's video. So the first question is in regards to getting back in the sport after a 10 year hiatus. Now, if you are coming back to karting, you've made the right decision. It's so much fun, it's always been fun. And it still is. These new engines, the X30s and the Rotaxes, well, they're not new, but they are excellent for karting. And here in Southeast Queensland, either TAG or TAG restricted categories, they're awesome. They run all over this country. Uh, and I would highly recommend anyone in the senior category jumping into TAG restricted if they've been out of the cart for a little while and then progress into the TAG open categories. So a great question came from one of our big channel supporters, Thomas King. And he was asking about X30 maintenance and also to the troubles that we have with X30 starting when we're at the track. Now we've covered these in some other videos, but for you, Tom, we're gonna to be making another video about this exact subject over the coming weeks, because it's a great topic and a lot of guys get stuck out of the track with the starter motor or the Bendix or the battery playing up. So we're gonna run through those things and show you guys how to fix them if you get stuck with that problem at the track. When it comes to Tony cars, a great question is, are they a front or rear bias go-kart? Traditionally speaking, they're a very balanced car. If anything, they tend towards a little bit of a front bias, meaning they do steer really well. Traditionally, as we go through the meeting, we're gonna start with some pretty neutral uh, setups in the front end, and then as those tires wear, well, the front tires that is, we get a little bit of tire deg, we're gonna start dialing in a little bit more front with some caster, a little bit more positive camber, and maybe some bigger front hubs. That way we can sort of mitigate any chronic understeer coming into those final couple of races. But generally speaking, the Tony Kart is a pretty balanced frame. If anything, it balances a little bit more towards the front than like a rear bias go-kart. Say the rear bias go-kart, the guys are talking like arrows, otherwise like a real front bias go-kart as a reference, we're talking like the barrel frames that really point into the corner really well. Now, a great question we get asked all the time is what is the perfect tire pressure? Well, that is a great question, but there's tons of interpretations because there isn't really a perfect pressure for every temperature and every condition. There's a perfect temperature and pressure for today for your tires at your track, but not for me at my track. But if I have to talk in general terms, around 10 to 12 PSI works for most of the tires that we work on at most of the tracks. The stickier the tire, generally you go to a lower pressure, harder the compound tire, normally we go higher PSI. So if you had a medium to hard grip tire, you're up in the high teens PSI. And if you're on a super high performance sticky compound tire, we're gonna be down in the low tens, nine, maybe 11 tops sort of thing because they generate so much heat. So if the tires are sticky, we're running 10 pounds, maybe a little bit under. Uh, SL tire, which is a hard compound tire, we're gonna be up in the high teens, low 20s, and then your medium grip tires, you're gonna be in around 12 to 14 PSI. So I've got another great question here about servicing a water pump. Now the water pumps are critical to the engine's performance. The water pump stops pumping, obviously, the longevity of the engine goes right down because the engine's going to overheat almost instantly. And uh, you know, I've seen water pumps leaking. That is terrible because obviously the water's leaking out of the engine and straight up the engine starts to boil. You get a little cavitation in the uh, cylinder and you can seize the engine just like that. So uh, water pump maintenance is critical. 
Most water pumps, well, say there's an entry level water pump that's not serviceable, but the, the higher end water pumps are serviceable, so you can change the seals. They're pretty straightforward. You pull them apart, pull the seal out, put the new ones in. You might have to use a socket or something to push that seal back into its house, and then you can reassemble the whole assembly and then put it back on the car and test it to make sure it's not leaking. Because like I said, a water pump that's leaking can be really detrimental. Not only does the engine lose its water, but it can overheat almost instantly. So really keep an eye on your fittings, your hoses, uh, your water pump is not leaking, and your radiator doesn't have any holes in it. The next question is how to use a Micron and, and an Alfano. Now we do have some great videos on this exact Topic. So go back through our library, it's in depth on Micron, we've got a couple little ones on Alfano. They're simple enough to use, there's some great directories online, but you can check out our videos too in our library. Next question is from Nismo SVD and he's asking about the new Leconte tyres that are coming in 2022. We haven't got our sticky little fingers on those tyres just yet, but over the Christmas break we're going to be getting the new tyres, we're going to be hitting the track and getting the results. So stay tuned because I'm sure we're going to be having some great videos on the new Leconte tyres here in Australia. So the next question from JC51 is in relation to the different types of oils and have we tested them for different horsepower and durability between synthetic and castor. So the main differences between the castor and the synthetic oils is we use the castor based oils in the iArmy products and the synthetic oils in the Rotax products. But lately I've been flicking over to the synthetic oils like the Motul GP2T in the iArmy engine as well. Now the horsepower variations are little if at all measured on our engine dyno. So realistically, I'm gonna say no, there is no difference. Is there a durability issue? Not really. I mean, the Shell M is a super heavy duty oil if you're spinning your engines right up to 18 or 20,000 RPM, even in the KZs where they've got a lot of load on the engine. But we do have problems fouling spark plugs when we do run castor oils sometimes. So we've been flicking over to, to to the synthetics to avoid those sorts of issues. So realistically, it's up to you. Use the caster, use the synthetic. If you're not gumming up your rings on your I, your IAMI engines, then you can stay using the caster oil. Otherwise, if you're having problems with engine durability, flick over to the Motul GP2T and you won't have any more issues. Great question from Benji is, what sort of budget would you set out for a competitor for a racing season without breakages? Well, what we generally recommend for new guys that are club day racing is to budget around 600 Australian dollars per race. So if you've got a 10 race series, it's going to run you about $6,000 over the course of the year. And that should cover your race entry fees, chains and sprockets, tires, fuel, oil, etc. And then obviously you've got some damage bills to go along with that and your capital purchases like new engines and new cards. But realistically, just for our a 10 race club day series or thereabouts, a budget for around five or $6,000. Now this is not a deal break if you don't have that much because you could just race less. So if you only have maybe two, $3,000 to spend for the year for your racing, we'll maybe do more practice days and less race days. It's not quite as exciting, but it's gonna get you down there in the long run on the track, having a good, good time and with your friends. What is the difference between a Rotax standard versus a Rotax CNC cylinder? When they're manufacturing Rotax cylinders, they're what they call sandcast cylinders. So when you sandcast something in manufacturing, you can get small variations. Now, two-stroke racing engines are susceptible to variations in performance on the track, depending on where those intake, exhaust, and transfer ports line up. So what they do now is they set those cylinders up and they do a little bit of CNC machining to make sure, or to try to get the parity of the engines so close, it's ridiculous. Those Rotax engines, the new Evos, are definitely awesome, and I highly recommend getting one if you're racing Rotax engines. The next question from Quan is about the Tillotson Carby on his X30, and it's losing pressure. So the best way to fix that is using a pressure gauge to measure the variation, and then you can either get a new spring a heavier duty spring, or you can stretch your old spring. So there are your three options. Now those little springs underneath the lever, we've got a video on how to change those. So click that through our, our YouTube library. Another question is from my friend Chris Hayes, and he's asking, should we go to the inside or the outside 
And yes, Chris, you are 100% right. That is a great question and a great suggestion, and it is always the inside. So if you're going for a passing maneuver, sit behind your competitor. If he's blocking on the inside, oh well, you're just gonna have to sit there and wait for him to move, and then put it in the inside even later, but always go to the inside. A great question from a young driver. Cooper asked how to take the hairpins at the Ipswich kart track. Well, Cooper, we do have that little snippet of information on our Instagram. So you can click to our reels, taking hairpins like a boss, go and watch those videos, and you are gonna know how to destroy when you hit those hairpins next race day. All right, so the last question for this week is, hey Des, it's my first race this weekend. Have you got any tips for me? Well, the, the first thing uh, I'd like to say if you're new to karting is just be a little bit cautious on that first race. You're gonna get some mad anxiety or butterflies but that's totally cool, I still get them now. So just be cool with it. Um, go out there on the track, be super cautious on the first and second corner. That seems to be where the most action is um, when you, you know, in a race. So just look for a, a big pile up of carts, especially if there's a lot of new guys. But once you get through the first couple of corners, um, everything settles down, you get into the groove and you can really start racing. So realistically, if you first race meeting, just be a little bit cautious on the opening lap, especially the first two corners. And then once you get through those, go your hardest. All right, guys, that's all we got time for this week. Like I said earlier in the video, Racing and Rituals, our tutorial series is on sale this Black Friday weekend only. So head to our amazing website and hook yourself up. It's insane, you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.